Welcome to Love Connection, where old-fashioned romance meets modern-day technology, where you hear all the intimate details of a first date. Sometimes our dates have a happy ending. And some other times, there's just an ending. But it's always unpredictable when two strangers meet, trying to make that love connection. And now, here's our host, Chuck Lowry! Hey, hey, Rick! Oh, thanks, everybody. Nice to see you. There's an audience there, all right. Yeah, this ought to get the job done. Let's get started by meeting our first guest. Now, he enjoys skiing and surfing, and he meets a lot of dates at the beach. He says that the most important thing he expects from a woman is loyalty. Please welcome Dov McNeely. Well, now, why, why is loyalty so important to you? Well, I don't think there's any reason for my girl to uh, be interested in anybody else. Once we've established a relationship, I think I should be enough. Well, I, I think be. that goes without saying, probably on her part as well. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna bring everybody up to date on what happened yesterday. Our studio audience saw Dodd's three choices. They voted for one. We're gonna take a look at all three women and catch you up today. First, there was Susan. She meets a lot of her dates on the golf course. Whether they're playing or not. <laughs> Lori uh, thinks that uh, she resembles Doris Day. Candace, uh, she thinks California men expect women to ask them out. Now, the audience uh, vote was recorded yesterday. We'll get to that a little later. Right now, Dobbs going to tell us who he chose. I chose Lori, Chuck. There's Lori. There she is. She's backstage. Say hello to Lori Stefano. Hi, Lori. Hi. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Dom. Just make yourself at home back there, okay? All right. Here we go. Tell me about the date. Showed up at Lori's house, knocked on the door, and I was just stunned, almost knocked to my knees by how good looking she was. I thought she was... <laughs> I thought she was very much more attractive than she was on the video, which she was already overwhelmingly attractive on the video. Oh, and, nice uh, thing to say. What did you think of him in person when you saw him, Laurie? I thought Dom was so good looking. When, he, when I opened up the door, I was very excited. Um, he had, since I expected someone with long hair, when I opened the door and I saw him with short hair, it was very clean cut and everything else. He looked like he just wanted to add GQ. <laughs> okay. So we're off to a good start. So. Looks are good. Now what happens next? <laughs> well, she invited me in, um, had a refreshment, and just decided it was time to go have dinner. Had a refreshment? A refreshment, Chuck. Very refreshing. Sounds like Kool-Aid and a hot dog or Close. something. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll leave that to your imagination. Okay. So we went to dinner, and a uh, really nice restaurant. And uh, when we walked in, when we first showed up, I noticed that all the, all the bus boys and the, the guys in the front there were checking Lori out. And just, I thought that was great. She, it didn't phase her a bit, though. Did and, you notice uh, that? Well, there's some cute looking guys there, but Dov was just devastating, so I didn't even notice. <laughs> devastating Dov. <laughs> so what happened? So we sat down and um, had a really nice dinner. Uh, kept getting acquainted and uh so we we continued on and then des i decided that it was time to go dancing but yeah Lori insisted it was time <laughs> to have coffee so uh, why why was so important about the, what was so important about that well i couldn't care less about the coffee it was just that i didn't want to end uh, dinner it was a very romantic setting and david just started holding my hand and he wanted to leave and go somewhere else and so i wanted to keep the romantic mood and so i ordered coffee even though i didn't want it She's smart, too. <laughs> so what happened? So we uh, got in my car, and we drove to a club in the same basic area, and uh, went in and did some dancing. Um, pretty she much danced, danced all night. Danced really good. She's yeah. a wonderful dancer. What about him? He's good, too. Yeah? I um, thought it was an appropriate time to, to ask her for a kiss, so... You asked her? Yeah, I Right asked. there on the dance floor. No, no. Excuse me. Oh, he okay. did not ask okay. at all. <laughs> okay. I, well, what did he do? Well, <laughs> he leaned over and he laid a very, very passionate kiss on me for about 45 seconds. Whoa. Yes. It was very, very nice. Were you surprised by it? 
it wasn't that I was surprised. I was just surprised at the, how passionate it was. And um, I didn't mind. It was great. And there was, here we are in the middle of this very crowded club. And um, it was nice, though. And I didn't care if anyone saw it because I'm not much for PDA, but it was all right this time. <laughs> so we, we ended the evening there and uh, went out to my car. Yeah. And I started the car, let it warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> what? Well, he. We started the car, and it must have been really cold because we sat in the car and let it warm up for an awfully long time, kissing. How long? Well, I would say a good 15 minutes. I'm just glad we weren't in Chicago when it's really cold in January because we've been never gotten out of that car. each other's arms. So you you go home, I guess. Yeah, I was getting late, and um, I live in L.A., and she lives in Newport Beach, and. Oh, that's that's an hour away. Yeah, it's about an hour mm -hmm. drive, and I had to be at work early the next day, so I thought it was getting close to time to end the evening, although I didn't want to. Um, I drove Lori to her house and uh, walked her to the door and fully expected to end it right there. Gave her a kiss, but uh, she asked me to come in for a refreshment. Can I have cookies and milk now? Cookies and milk, right? <laughs> And uh, we uh, went inside and kissed and hugged and talked for about a half an hour. She walked me back to the door, and uh, I left and walked to my car. And when I got to my car, I looked back, and I noticed Lori was still looking at me, still watching me. What, you, thought, what were you thinking about? Uh, Anything well, in particular? Can you remember? Yeah, I was watching him walk away because I was just thinking that, you know, I went on the show, and I thought, oh, I won't get anyone that I really would like. And here's this guy who's really good looking, a great personality, great kisser, great dancer, great package deal. And I got it from the love connection. <laughs> that was good. That was it. Take a look and see the audience pick for you, okay? Lori, 45 percent. I hope you'd like to take her out and take her audience's advice to pay for it. I'd love to, sir. All right with you, Lori? I'd love to. Come on in. Sounds like a real good date for both of you. Yeah. Turned out really well. Yeah, you had yeah. a good time. I'm glad. I like it when it works. So do we. So, yeah, <laughs> should have been here earlier in the week. <laughs> yeah, we have a nice gift for both of you. Thanks for coming on the Thank show. You. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. We're going to come right back with another couple. Ago, our studio audience selected a date for him, and he's back to tell us about that date. He's originally from Pontiac, Michigan. He prefers daytime dates. He admits that women aren't always thrilled about his dinner conversation. Please welcome Carl Booth. Hey, Carl. Well, tell me about your dinner conversation. What? I mean, you know, dissecting toads or something? What is it? <laughs> close. It was um, close? Yeah. Close. Well, you know, I work in surgery. Oh, that's right. And, um, you know, after putting in five to 18 hours a day, you know, it's hard not to talk about it. You know, a lot of times the women don't like to hear about spleen removal or hitting the artery and blood well, yeah. and all over the place. You know, <laughs> you know, they don't, uh, they I guess to you off. it's just kind of second nature. Yeah. But it's not to other people. They don't even like to think about that stuff. Not at all. Yeah. Why do you prefer daytime dates? What is it about those? Well, I get up at 5.30 every morning, and, mm. you know, I put in, uh, you know, average eight, eight-hour day, mm -hmm. and um, I'm tired. I'm just tired after You're that. You're probably programmed to go to sleep early. <laughs> exactly. And uh, about the time 8, 9 o'clock comes, I am just dead tired. Yeah. You know? And so, but if I can have a, um, if I'm going to go out on a date, Late night, I usually try to take a two-hour nap or something like that. They're flashing a card over there asking me to ask you about your earring. I don't see it. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Yeah. What do women think about that? They love it. A lot of women. Yeah, a lot of women. No, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of women like it. They think it adds to my character, and I like it. You know, there's a lot of things I'll do. Um, if a woman asks me to shave my mustache, fine. I might, sh I might shave my mustache. My beard, I might. Never take out my earring. Never? Never. I love it. You ever try something with a hoop and rhinestones? No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I should never have said that. Anyway, Carl agreed to let the audience choose his date. We're going to show everybody the three women they had to choose from. First was Tracy. She says that her ideal man is tall, educated, and has short hair. Very concise. <laughs> Next it was Sherelle. She avoids men who are selfish, self-centered, or shy. Must be the threes today. Finally, Christina. She says that the best way to get a man's attention is to poke him with a stick, man. Oh, come on. 
Well, the audience picked one of those women for Carl. We're going to meet her, and we're going to meet her right after this break, and it takes exactly two minutes and two seconds. Okay, we're back, and we're going to remind... Uh, why don't you remind us who the audience chose? Yeah, I, pre I picked Christina. Christina. Okay. Yeah. Christina's backstage. going to say hello to Christina. Hi, Christina. How are you? Fine, yourself. Yeah, just make yourself at home back there, okay? Okay. All right. Tell me about the date. Well, um, we talked on the phone a couple of times, right. and um, we had a nice conversation. When I first talked to her, I thought she was kind of tough. Really? A real hard woman. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But after a while, you know, she seemed, you know, all right. She seemed pretty mm -hmm. nice. What was your impression of him on the phone, Christine? I was not impressed, nor was I depressed. Um, you weren't impressed or depressed? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's, he's a frat guy, and he's typical of it. The jargon, everything. I, I wasn't impressed at all. Oh. <laughs> Well, so what happened next? Well, we talked, and she kept asking me how much I made. How well, much you made? How much money I made. And I'm like, I well, that's kind of a personal that. question, isn't it? No, no, okay. If someone, if, if they don't answer the question, you're going to continue to ask them. That's all. I just like my way, and he didn't answer it. I just thought I'd pick him until he you answered. Know, yeah. I didn't think it was any, I didn't answer because I didn't think it was any of her business how much yeah. I made. And I don't care if I made $100,000, she wouldn't get a dime of it. I don't care if you made $100,000 Well, I don't mean to get personal, Carl. I'm just kind of curious myself here. How, how much do you make? Thank you. <laughs> I make enough to survive. <laughs> so what happened? Anyway, we talked on the phone. We made um, arrangements. Then we went to the restaurant. What did you think of his looks when you saw him now, Christine? Um, Carl needs a little workout. That'll work. Um, a little what? <laughs> workout. Um, I'm used to bodybuilders and, and nice bodies, football players. Um, whoa, whoa. That she didn't have no hourglass figure herself. Yeah. But it looks good, baby. No, it, okay, but and you, and you okay. know it. You know it. You find your body to do some work too, honey. Oh. Uh, yeah, anyway. Oh. anyway. Well, what happened next? Anyway, we went to the restaurant. <laughs> we had, you know, we had nice conversations. Was laughing back there? The, con <laughs> the conversation was nice. No, um, yeah, I mean, I did talk about my job because I thought it was interesting. What so, do you uh, remember him talking about, Christine? His job during dinner, how he cuts up people. I mean, I was really <laughs> impressed at dinner. Really. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, what can I say? I thought, I, I thought it was pretty fun. You know, we talked about We didn't talk about my job. We talked about other things. Anyway. Like? Um, <laughs> Well, um, that's, that's, about that's me. the point. Yeah, yeah just anyway. Didn't. What? It was interesting. I mean, what? I had to talk about something. <laughs> what did you say, Christine? It was interesting. He couldn't even think of anything else we talked about. Oh, oh you didn't say anything either, so it really doesn't matter. At least mind. I was thinking of something. Yeah. Trying to keep a conversation. Anyway. How um, was the meal? <laughs> meal? The meal was nice. Um, I mean, the appetizer really filled me up, so I really didn't get to the main yeah. course that Did much. he seem to enjoy the meal, Christine? No, um, he left a dollar tip on a $60 um, dinner. A dollar tip. I was in my fur looking good and they left a dollar tip. I was oh. <laughs> That is a little light. It wasn't a dollar, was it? What? It wasn't quite a dollar, was it? 50 no. cents? Yeah, it was more like 50 cents, right. Uh, okay. On a $60 tip? No, it wasn't or quite $60. $60. It was close. But I spent the money on the road that she didn't even appreciate it. So you know, it see, matter. it's like someone told anyway. you to do it. And I would have rather you bring one rose and left a bigger tip, I'll be very honest. It's, it's like you're not used to it. That's all. I'm not trying. No, I mean, you just seem like you're just very unappreciative of it. Maybe Of I someone am? doing nice. That's what it seemed with me. Well, now, what happened after Anyway, that? we, you know, after we left the restaurant, we talked some more and uh, took her home. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Drove up to her house yes. and I parked the car and I said, okay, this is the moment of the big kiss. So I kind of really? leaned, I kind of leaned over. No, I thought, wait a minute, I don't understand. How come you were going to do this? I mean, because just... I thought it was going nice. I thought it was nice. Yeah, I thought it was nice. I mean, you're just, this is all new to you today. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was going nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought, thought okay. you knew it didn't go that well. I'm sorry. Okay, so it wasn't going at each other's throats. It was nice and yeah. civil. Oh. And so I said, okay, little kiss. And I leaned over and she said, oh, I'm not ready for the kiss. I'm like, well, fine. I said, I'm just glad I didn't pay for the meal because I was seriously mad. Yeah. So. Um, and that's the problem right there. You do not respect women, and I cannot deal with that. I mean, that's what I thought. No, so and your actions no, show that. I do, no, I do respect women. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You know do, what he honey. said to me? He said, no, the what? dog in me is trying to come out, but you won't allow it. I cannot appreciate it. Oh, hold on, hold on, wait a second. 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 Wait a second.
wait a second. Wait a second. I mean, I thought I was, I was very, I was very gentlemanly and everything. Opened the car door, walked her in. I was like, fine, okay. I mean, I wasn't, no, I wasn't devastated because she wouldn't kiss me. It didn't matter to me if she kissed me or not. You know? Well, and then that was the end. Yeah, it was the end. You know, walked her to the door, and she offered me a hug. I said, fine, I'll take oh, it. Oh, wait, no. I'll take it. <laughs> offered me a hug. <laughs> Christian offered, offered me a hug. I took it and just left. That was that. I guess it's safe to assume you may not want another day with me. No, 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 not at all. Yes. No. Wild. <laughs> Wild. Very dark. Sorry that things didn't work out, Christine. I mean, sometimes it doesn't. It just sounds like you all didn't get along together. You were mismatched. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have a nice gift for you. Maybe we'll see you again, Christine. I hope so. Okay. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, now, when the audience chooses a date and it doesn't work out, which isn't very often, uh, we offer a date with one of the other two women. We're going to take a look at them and see if Carl finds either one of them interesting. First, there was Tracy. She says that her ideal man is tall, educated, and has short hair. Remember her? Sherelle uh, avoids men who are selfish, self-centered, or shy. So you got a choice there between Tracy and Sherelle. Do either one of those appeal to you at yes, all? Yes, since the audience picked it, my first choice was Sherelle. Oh, was no. your first point? Your yes. first choice was Sherelle. Okay. So you'll go out with Sherelle. And we'll pick up the tab on that. Hopefully that'll go better. Okay. I hope it does, Carl. Oh, so Good to see you again. Okay. Good luck on your date. Thank you. Now, we're going to come right back with the next guest right after this. Stay with you. Stay tuned for more of Love Connection. We're going to meet our next guest. She describes herself as strong-minded and very lovable. She says that she uh, should be more choosy about her dance partners, and she claims that being short is a big advantage when it comes to meeting men. Please welcome Karen Dunbar. Hi, Karen. How are you? Nice to meet you. Have a seat. Now, what's the advantage of being short? Boy, you smell good. Thank you. Yeah, you smell real good. <laughs> what's the advantage of being short? Well, it seems that guys like short girls. Yeah. They like to run up and pick you up and spin you around. And I always say, don't you dare, because you're going to drop me. Yeah. But they like to pick you up. And... I don't, it must so be some kind of fetish. So they feel kind of physical, physically superior, perhaps. Uh, is that maybe possible? that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. How, how tall uh, you normally, how tall are the men you normally date? I usually like men that are from 5'9 up to about 6'2. I prefer 6 feet and up. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I like to reach up, step on my toes, and grab them. They have, usually have big hands, big long arms. They can put around you, and you know you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you're right there. Why well, do you want to be more choosy about your dance partners? Well, and Speaking it seems... of dancing, wouldn't it be a little tough to dance with somebody that's 6'2? Not at all. Oh, okay. You can snuggle right in where you want to go. Well... I'll have to uh, turn that one over maybe about a half an hour. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> so uh, what, what about the, well, the other question, when whatever it was somebody, that I asked you? You're talking about dancing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when you dance with somebody, somebody comes to ask you to dance. I'll dance with anybody. I'm not picky. I'm not mm -hmm. rude. I'll dance with anybody. Mm -hmm. But it seems when you dance with them, you're their property for the rest of the night. That's it. No more. They'll sit well, down at your table, good. they'll buy you a drink, you, they don't want your phone number, you're going to go home yeah. with them, whatever. You're stuck with them. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take a look at the tapes that Karen saw. Now, remember, you're going to vote, okay? First, there was Todd. He loves to play volleyball. He dates about once or twice a week. And uh, when he's in love, he says that he gets a funny feeling in his tummy. <laughs> and since he's from Wisconsin, we ask him if he misses the women back home. Women from the Midwest uh, have got a special place in my heart. My mother, my grandmother. <laughs> And, uh, but, uh, they're a lot more attractive out here. <laughs> they're not as heavy out here. <laughs> Next was Frankie, enjoys softball and skiing, claims that women are attracted to his hair and his complexion. And he says that women who are preoccupied with their appearance really get on his nerves, and here's more on that. I can understand looking good always, or clean, or, or having your hair nice, but, uh, always, you know, just have to have the right clothes, have to have the right... You know, something to match. I mean, you know, you know, or a date that won't go out if she doesn't look nice. I mean, that's ridiculous. And finally, Dale, his interests include bicycling, uh, taking weekend vacations. He says that he gets a lot of compliments on his legs. And we asked Dale if he has much success approaching women, and here's what he told us. You get your wings shot off a lot. You, um, they blow you out of the water a lot. It's... <laughs> Oftentimes you'll go up and you'll be real confident, and by the time you walk away, you're a little tiny guy. They blew you right out of the water and made fun of you. 
right. Those are the three men that Karen had to choose from. It's time for you to vote now. Who do you think would be the best guy for? Well, it didn't take long. All right, audience has made its choice. Karen's going to tell us who she picked. Who'd you pick? I chose Dale. You, you chose Dale. Okay. We're out of time, so we're going to find out everything that happened on Karen's Day tomorrow. That's our show for today. But we'll be back tomorrow with Karen and more singles trying to make a love connection. I'm Chuck Woolery. I hope all your dates are good ones tonight. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Some of the guests on Love Connection will receive one of the following. Great on everything, from stir-fry to chicken pot pie and then some. Yay, the lively taste of Tabasco sauce. Don't keep it bottled up. Or what tastes like your favorite chocolate that doesn't have sugar? New Cocoa Mints, made with pure imported cocoa. The great chocolate taste from Bellamix. Or heartburn, tum to tum Acid indigestion, tum to tum tum Sour stomach, it's tum to tum tum tums Or shout, now improved with 25% more cleaning power. Want a tough stain out? Shout it out. Or Tetley Tea. With its tiny little TV taste, bet you're gonna like it better. Or anti tartar aim toothpaste, the great tasting way to fight tartar. A proven tartar control formula and great taste, that's anti tartar aim. This is Rich Jeffrey speaking for Love Connection. Chuck Willie's wardrobe furnished by Ratner Dimitri Clothes.